I would like to describe or divide, generally speaking, the emotion of sadness into three categories. There's sadness that you brought upon yourself as a result of something you've done. It's, it's your fault. And you know that. That's, that's sadness you brought upon yourself. Then there's sadness brought upon you by others. Something they said, something they did, something, you know, something they, uh, some, some, somehow they had an effect on you, and they brought sadness upon you. And the third circumstance of sadness is a sadness that's a result of a circumstance. You can't even blame a person. It could be something like a car accident. It could be like an earthquake. It could be anything. You know, it could be a sickness. It could be whatever. And these kinds of, and so there are these three circumstances. And the first circumstance, the first circumstance, what was it again? What was the first circumstance? Something you've done yourself. And you're depressed about something you did. A lot of people have that. My recommendation is to you, for you to carefully study the dua made by Musa alayhi salam. And you'll notice, as I, as I talk, you'll notice that I keep trying to illustrate to you the talk, the subject of my talk was the Qur'an's remedy for sadness. There's not one, there are thousands of remedies in the Qur'an for sadness. But I keep alluding to the fact that every time I get close to talking about a solution, what comes up? Dua. Every time I start talking about a solution, what comes up again? Dua comes up. Adam alayhi salam was sad, what did Allah give him? Allah gave him a dua. Uh, you know, you have um, Ilyas alayhi salam, extreme, you know, really did, 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 in, in, in a state of depression, sadness, and he says, I will only complain to Allah azza wa Right, so you have these prophetic situations and they all turn into du'as. Now this du'a is which prophet? When you made a mistake yourself? Musa alayhi salam. I'm sure you've done some pretty bad things, but I'm pretty sure you didn't punch a guy and he died. <laughs> I, I, don't raise your hand, please. Don't. There's police here, just, just relax, okay? <laughs> they're not, they're not here, you do not have to check. When you've done something wrong, you are one of the victims. You're not just the criminal, you actually, Allah makes you suffer internally for that. You pay the price. But even if it was an honest mistake in the case of Musa alayhi salam, he had that, that guilt of taking another life. It's not something easy to swallow. It doesn't leave you alone. But Allah gave him, inspired him with this beautiful dua. Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. That is actually the key to moving on with life. If you made a mistake and you don't know how to move on with life, learn from the dua of Musa alayhi salam. Master, no doubt about it, me, whatever good you send my way, I am desperately in need, my back is broken, I am not capable. Whatever good you send my way, I can use it. Let me explain what, you, what we mean by good here. Good means two things. Ya Allah, give me good opportunities in life. Ya Allah, don't let the mistake I made make the rest of my, my life a bad you know, experience. Don't give me sadness after sadness after sadness. Give me positive experiences and good opportunities in life. By the way, right after that dua, Musa alayhi salam got a job in the next ayah. <laughs> right, he made that dua, next ayah he got hired. And married. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. And, and, and that next ayah starts with a fa, which means therefore, therefore the girl came, called him to the dad, he told the story, she said, I'd like to, you know, let's hire him, and you know, the whole thing worked out. But all as a result of his dua. What we're learning that, that because that little fa in the ayah in Surah Al-Qasas is that duas can have a serious impact on your, the rest of your life. Where am I going to find a job? I'm homeless. I'm a fugitive from the law. I ran away from Egypt. I don't even know my way around here. I'm just sitting by a puddle of water. You know, I don't even my shoes are torn up. My clothes are beat up. I'm sitting under a tree. I don't even know if this tree belongs to someone that kicks me out of here. Next thing, I just, yeah, Allah, send some good my way. Boom. Got a job. Married a girl. Moved in. Eight-year visa. Set. <laughs> so the approachable sky, meaning the first sky. Allah just said in the previous, there are seven layers of the sky, right? So the lowest one of them was beautified with masabih from misbah. Misbah means lamp. This is Allah's way of saying Allah put lamps, hung lamps, all over the first sky. Lamps here refers to the stars. And so we're learning that the stars are decorations for sky number one. How many skies are there altogether? Seven. So the most powerful telescopes we have now that peer into the depths of the universe still see stars. As far as you see stars, you're still looking at sky number one. dunya bi masabi. We decorated the first sky, the lowest sky, with stars. And we made them a means of firing at, stoning, pelting the devils. In other words, you know, we, we learn, we're gonna learn actually in Surah Al Jinn 
Uh, we've learned some of this before also. Some, some of it was mentioned in Surah Qaf. That the shayateen try to steal information from the angels. But the angels have an entire platoon. They have an entire like entourage that delivers sacred information from the seventh heavens to the earth. Two prophets or whatever execution of affairs. The angels are going to do Allah's work on the earth. And the jinn try to steal it in the sky. But when they try to steal it, the, the, the angels have basically, you know, anti-aircraft, anti-jinn missiles that they shoot at them. And these are the shooting stars and meteors and stuff. They're fired at them and they run. So this, this entire scene, وَجَعَلْنَهَا رُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينَ It's left ambiguous now. Surah Al-Jinn will open the subject up. When the jinn describe themselves how they get shot at. وَأَعْتَدْنَا لَهُمْ عَذَابَ السَّعِيرِ And we have prepared for them punishment of, of the blazing flame. Now back in the day, somebody asked the Muslim, one of the Muslims, how are the jinn going to be burning in hellfire? They're made of fire. How's it going to burn them? So the scholar they asked took some dirt and threw it in the guy's eyes. And the guy's like, why'd you do that? He's like, you're made of dirt, did it hurt? <laughs> so, <laughs> not the best way to answer a question in conversation, but... It gets the point across, and it's probably anecdotal. But anyway, وَلِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمْ And for those who disbelieve in their master, those who disbelieved in their master, is punishment of Jahannam. وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ What a horrible place to go back to that is. كُلَّمَا أُلْقِيَ فِيهَا فَوْجٌ Every single time, a huge group of people is being thrown into it. سَأَلَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا Its guardians, the guardians that were mentioned in Surah At-Tahrim. Remember them? عَلَيْهَا مَلَائِكَةٌ غِلَاظٌ شِدَادٌ لَا يَعْسُونَ اللَّهَ مَا أَمَرَهُمْ Those same guardians in the next surah. Now they're asking them, أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ نَذِيرٌ no, no warner came to you? You weren't given graphic description of this? You hear that donkey braying noise? You weren't told about that? You didn't own a donkey and they reminded you now? You know? You didn't hear about the steaming when you're about to be thrown in? You, nobody came? Really? You didn't hear it? SubhanAllah. Alam yatikum nadir. See, this 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 statement is very heavy because I connect the statement directly to what is a nadir. What is a nadir? Nadir is a messenger, but the book is also a nadir. Al Quranu bashirun wa nadir. If the vast majority of Muslims don't even know the warning, they don't even know what Allah says how he's warning us about the serious nature of hellfire. And by the way, previous surah already, I already tried to make the point, we're not supposed to feel safe from hellfire. Because if we were, Allah wouldn't tell us to protect ourselves from it. So is it possible that a Muslim who never cared to go through the Qur'an, even a little, even to know, just a little, isn't that question valid on that person too? No warner came to you? You didn't get any warning? Nothing? You have no clue? أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ نَذِيرٌ قَالُوا And these people, the kuffar even, they said, بَلَا جَعَلَا نَذِيرٌ Yeah, yeah, a warner did come to us. فَكَذَّبْنَا We just considered him a lie. We just considered it a lie. We considered him a liar. We attribute lies to them. We accuse them of being liars. وَقُلْنَا مَا نَزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ And we said, come on, Allah didn't send anything down. Please, revelation, God, messenger. You know? وَقَالُوا لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ أَوْ نَعْقِلُوا And they will say then, if we had only listened, and if we had only understood, if we had only applied our intellect. The first condition mentioned here is that of listening. لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ أَوْ نَعْقِلُوا The thing of it is, this revelation, these messengers, they are of no benefit to a person until they're willing to listen. And after, only after listening, will you consider giving it some thought. Right? أَلَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ أَوْ نَعْقِلُوا مَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ We would not have been from the people of the, the blazing, the scorching fire. فَاعْتَرَفُوا بِذَنْبِهِمْ Then they'll admit to their sin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.